Good morning. We are so glad to be together. Even though we cannot be physically together, we are one body in Christ. Let us begin with our call to worship. Praise be to God who, who builds, builds up the church. church. Praise be to God who, who heals our divisions. divisions. Praise be to God who, who gathers, gathers us as one. one. And this little light of mine. our sin before God and one another. Risen Lord, we, we see, see the, the miracle, miracle of, of your resurrection, resurrection yet, yet so often live as though we, we are still lost in our sins. We rely on our own feeble will. We stay mired in the past and we refuse that which is too uncomfortable or unfamiliar. Forgive, forgive us, us and, and open, open our, our hearts, hearts again to, to your freedom. freedom. Amen. Amen. Praise God, Christ is arisen. We have a new life and the old life has fallen away. Rejoice that we are truly forgiven and go out and proclaim the grace that is free to all. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray together our prayer of the day. Loving God, your followers were faithful even in the face of strong opposition. Give us their courage and conviction to be worthy proclaimers of the gospel of grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, kids. Pastor Mike, welcome to our children's message today. I thought I would do something different and special. Because our message today is about the church and what makes the church. So I thought maybe, since it's been a little while, you might want to see these special places here at First Lutheran where you come on Sundays to learn more about Jesus. So let's go take a look, all right? All right, everybody. Can you figure out where we are right now? That's right. We're with our preschool classroom. All of our Preschool 1 and Preschool 2 kids, how are you? Here's your classroom where you have been able to come and learn with your teachers. And I'm looking at some of these great pictures that have been colored in. This is your helper that's been helping you this year, that, that helped with all, all coloring in those pictures. And I'm looking at all of your names that are here. Kelty and Chase and Augie, Delaney, Finley, Nolan, Lennox, Hannah, Oliver, Logan, Otto, Gabriel, Amelia, Charlie, Addison, Amaya, Trinity, Brooklyn, people who've come and visited us too. And look at all of your smiley faces. And then we get here and we haven't been able to add anymore because you're not in the building. But that doesn't mean you're not learning about Jesus, does it? That's what's most important. So where you're at right now, I hope you keep learning more and more about how much Jesus loves us. We miss you preschool one and preschool two. Let's go see who we're going to see next, huh? All right. Where are we at now, everybody? This looks like our kindergarten and first grade classroom. Look at all the awesome 
awesome pictures that you all did so far. Aren't those great? Look at all of them. You've been learning so many things about Jesus heals. Here's one here about when Israel got divided. Do you remember those stories that you got a chance to learn here this year? Some great stories about Jesus and all of the stories of our Old Testament about the prophets and people like Moses and David and all of those. And you've learned those all right here. But just like in our preschool classroom, you know, as I look at all of your names here, Keegan and Quincy, Wrigley and Leo, L Lennon and Wesley, Audra, Tenley, Shaylin, Bryn, Lola, RJ, Nolan, Alina, and Hunter. When I see all your names, I know that there's a big piece missing right here. This is a great classroom to learn, but you're not here right now. But like I said to the preschoolers, that doesn't mean you're not learning. And I hope you're still learning and you're still getting more and more information about how much God loves you. Let's go check out another room. Awesome second graders. How you doing? Here's your room. This is the place you've been learning this year too, right? So happy to have a chance to be in your room today and be thinking about you. And I'm looking here and I want to give you all a shout out too because, you know, this is a great place to learn, but it's just a room right now because we're missing all of you. So Harper and Blake, Miley and Kyle, Ethan and Grace, Bentley, Caden, Owen, Kaylee, Elijah, Jackson, Hunter, and Luke. All of our awesome second graders. You know, I hope that you are still uh, holding on to, to your Bibles and, and reading some stories in there and that you've had a chance even to come and have a little lunch with me at 1215 on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays when we talk about Bible stories. And, uh, you know, even though the room is kind of quiet now without you, we know that the greatest piece that happens in this room is what you all take with you when you go back home into school. So I hope you're living out your faith that you're learning here in your classroom. Let's go to our next room. Now you know where I'm going, right? We started with our preschools. We went to the kindergartners and first graders. We were just with the second graders. Now I'm here for all of our third and fourth graders. How are you? I hope you're all doing well. We're in your room, a place that is very quiet without you. And I know how noisy our third and fourth graders can be. So I hope you're doing well and that you are spending time with uh, the Bibles that we've given you at ch from church. You're learning your Bible stories and you're spending time experiencing God in new ways outside our classroom. Because that is where God is too. Not just here. God's in the classroom. So a shout out to our awesome third graders. Regan and Megan. Alyssa, Nora, and Hazel, I hope you're all doing great. And our third and our fourth graders, uh, Lizzie and Kira, Alexis, Alex, Hunter, Jackson, Graham, Levi, uh, Livia, Lauren, and Lucas. Have a great, great day, everybody. We miss seeing you here, but we know you're doing great things and being the example of Jesus where you're at right now. Let's go to the next room. And now to our fifth and sixth graders. I know you're awesome people. You're doing some great things and you're going to keep doing some great things in all that you all that's going to come your way. Uh, kids, you're our older leaders when we think about our, our uh, young people here, uh, when we think about all the children's ministries that go on here. And when I look at all of your names on this board, I see some awesome people. And I know you're going to keep doing awesome things right now. So I want to encourage you to keep being the light. Keep being that light of Jesus, okay? So a shout out to our awesome fifth grade, to Drake, Megan and Wyatt, Jenna and William, Jenna, Jenna R., as well as Jenna M. earlier, Gab Gabrielle, uh, Nadia, Nora, Kylie, Aiden, and Dawson. So cool to see your names and wish you were here to fill this space. Our sixth graders, Zoe, Keegan, and Jacob, Bryce, and Carly. 
and M- Maya, I was going to say Mia, Maya, oh my goodness, that would have been bad, Izzy and William and Gabrielle. So cool. So cool to read your names, and I can picture you all here learning and growing in your faith. We've got one more stop, kids, and then we're going to finish our children's message. All right, we're going to finish up in this room. This is the room that all of you as kids here at First Lutheran waiting for your chance to be part of our youth ministry and in our youth room where you can play games and do all these great things. But on our wall are the words of Psalm 73. I belong to you and you hold me by the hand. And look at all the hands. Those hands are, are hands of people who are not only part of our our youth ministry today, but a lot of those hands are people who are grown up and are out living their lives. And kids, that's what I want to tell you today. Even though we're not here, even though we're not here in the building, you're still the church. Because kids, the church isn't the building. The church isn't the classroom. The church is you. The church is you and me and your parents and your grandparents and your whole family. We are the church. That's why we keep telling you every week at the end of our church service, you are the church wherever you may be. So kids, keep learning about Christ and keep being the church. We love you. We'll see you soon. Our text for this Sunday come from both the book of Acts and the book of 1 Thessalonians. We're going to begin with the book of Acts, uh, chapter 17, with verse 1. After Paul and Silas had passed through Amphilius and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where where there was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul went in, as was his custom, and on three Sabbath days argued with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that it was necessary for the Messiah to suffer and to rise from the dead, and saying, This is the Messiah, Jesus, whom I am proclaiming to you. Some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a great many of the devout Greeks, and not a, and, and not a few of the leading women. But the Jews became jealous. And with the help of some ruffians in the marketplaces, they formed a mob and set in the city in an uproar. While they were searching for Paul and Silas to bring them out to the assembly, they attacked Jason's house. When they could not find them, they dragged Jason and some believers before the city authorities, shouting, These people who have been turning the world upside down have come here also. And Jason has entertained them as guests. They are all acting contrary to the decrees of the emperor, saying that there is another king named Jesus. The people and city officials were disturbed when they heard this. And after they had taken Baal from Jason and the others, they let them go. Now we'll turn to that book of First Thessalonians, the letter that is written to this church that we just heard about. To the church of Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers constantly, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you, Because our message of the gospel came to you, not in word only, but also in the power and in the Holy Spirit. And with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecutions, you received the word with joy and inspired by the Holy Spirit so that you became an example to all believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. 
For the people of whose regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is to come. Friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, we didn't get a chance yet in our our narrative lectionary to be introduced to this man yet, but today we turn from listening to the teachings of Peter to listening to Paul. Um, So just to give us a little background as as we get into this, remember who Paul is. Paul was a religious leader. Paul was part of the Jewish leadership. And he turns and changes after a conversion experience of encountering Jesus. And he changes and becomes perhaps one of the strongest of the apostles in proclaiming the good news. And he goes by to proclaim those good, that good news by not going to the safe places. Not going to the sure places where where he knows he's going to be accepted and welcomed. Paul takes this message, this transformational message, and takes it to all ends. Where we're at today in Thessalonica is northern Greece. That's where Thessalonica actually is. Paul has taken this message, moved it from Israel, and has brought it out into the world. And he's reaching people like nobody else. He's reaching people with this message of hope, transformation, and future. Future beyond what we see today. Future beyond what we can touch. Future that is with our God in eternity. Paul's message resonated with the people so much that he continued to bring people in from all different walks of life. And that was the problem. And that sounds crazy, doesn't it? Doesn't it sound crazy that religious leaders would have a problem with people knowing who God is? With people knowing that they have a God who loves them and wants to do things for them. That that they have a God who wants to have a deep relationship with all humanity. Well, it was a problem. It was a problem for the religious leaders because you see what was happening is that Paul's message, while powerful, upset the status quo. We like the status quo. We like the status quo. We like being able to know exactly how things are going to be. We like being able to know that what I have planned for tomorrow will happen the way I have it planned. We like and we find comfort in looking back and holding on to those things we've done over and over and over again. The problem with the status quo The problem with the status quo in the scriptures, in the book of Acts and in 1 Thessalonians, the problem with that status quo is that that status quo had become stale. There was no life in the witness of the synagogue. There was no hope for a tomorrow. There was no welcoming in of people from all different walks of life. The status quo didn't allow for that. It just allowed for those who had the control to feel comfortable. Jesus' radical message that Paul is sharing invites everyone in. It takes the status quo and says, let's put the status quo where it needs to be. The status quo needs to be a stepping stone to get us into this unknown.
future. An unknown future, friends, is where faith lives abundantly. I mean, if we know what's going to happen tomorrow, do we really need to have faith? I mean, it's really easy to live our lives if we know exactly what it is that we're going to do. But that's not how life is. And what we have been experiencing these last few weeks should be a wake-up call to you and me that status quo doesn't always work. That in these uncertain moments where we can't plan for tomorrow, we can't know how things are going to be in the next few weeks or month or even year. This is a time for us to be like the church of of Thessalonica. This is the time for us to be like those who heard the encouraging words of Paul and Silas. Paul, who would go into the synagogues and argue with those who were holding on to the status quo and say, no, you're wrong. This is the Messiah. This is what the Messiah came to do. The Messiah came to reconcile us all to our God who loves us, a God in who we have faith so that this unknown tomorrow is not something that we're going to fear. This unknown coming weeks is not something that we should dread. Instead, we will get up tomorrow with anticipation that comes from faith. Anticipation that comes from knowing that today, tomorrow, two weeks, month, and year are in the hands of a God whose heart is for God's people. For you and for me. When Paul built the early church, he built the early church not with magnificent synagogues and temples. When Paul began building that early church, he built the early church in the homes and in the countrysides, in the parks, He built the early church in you and me, in the people. The people are what make the church alive. The people are what makes the church relevant and meaningful. The people are what is going to bring back for us today a vital and strong witness for God. 1 Thessalonians is a wonderful book. It's considered perhaps the oldest of Paul's letters that were found. And in this letter, Paul pours his loving heart out to those people who dared to come alongside of him in the midst of struggle, in the midst of persecution, in the midst of uncertain times. Paul says, you, my friends, came alongside and accepted this witness, believed in God's word, and you did so in the midst of all those struggles with joy. Joy. Joy in the midst of hard times. Joy in the midst of uncertainty. This church, friends, embraced not the status quo, but embraced the unknown tomorrow with a deep faith, and when they rested in their faith, they felt joy in the depth of their hearts and in the depth of who they are. Friends, as we look at tomorrow, as we look at the weeks ahead with uncertainty, let us change our perspectives. Let us change our mindsets so that we don't fall into what is the status quo So we don't fall into the easy response of being uh, being uncertain and worried. Let's change the status quo as followers of Christ. And resting in Christ, 
Let us look at that uncertain tomorrow with anticipation of what Jesus will do with us and what God will do through us and what the Holy Spirit will encourage us to do. And let us do it with joy. Joy in our hearts. Amen. <clears throat> I have the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart. I have the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. I have the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Down in my heart, down in my heart, I have the love of Jesus, love of Jesus, down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart, I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Good and gracious God, we are quick to take offense and slow to listen when our assumptions are questioned. Open our minds to the transforming power of your word new to us each day. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Too often we use the resources of this planet for our own enjoyment, entertainment, and convenience without thought of the damage we might be doing. Forgive us and turn us back to the one who created all things that we might responsibly resume the role of your faithful stewards. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. This social distancing is starting to get old. We long to be with our friends and loved ones. We long to get back to our jobs and activities. Make your presence known to us during these difficult days. Help us to see your light to give us hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Your early disciples relied heavily on the Spirit's power to guide them through every obstacle they faced. Give us a faith like theirs, which enables us to take bold risks for the sake of spreading the gospel, especially during this long and frustrating shelter in time. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Give your tender care and healing to all who are in need this day, especially for all who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, all who are separated from loved ones, all who are experiencing loneliness, anxiety, stress, obsessive disorders, or depression. We pray for those who are grieving and those we name in our hearts, either silently or out loud. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We stand in a long line of saints who dedicated their lives to spreading your truth and standing for mercy and grace. Inspire us by their witness and make us the kind of followers who encourage others to embrace your mission. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We offer these prayers for your safekeeping and trust that you have heard us for the sake of the, our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, remember you are the church wherever you may be.